The achievement gap is an average of all poor people's, basically all poor people's scores in comparison to all rich people's scores. And uh, it's not likely we'll entirely close that gap ever because poor people are not as well educated and the parents won't be able to provide the same level of education as people who are well educated and have generally more money. So that, that probably will never happen, but we can get closer and closer. And in fact, I would say that in with some hesitation, the United States has done a great job of closing the achievement gap. The best way to close the achievement gap is to close the gap between rich and poor people. In America, we have extremely rich people and extremely poor people. That's not the case in Sweden, for example, where people are more or less get a similar wage. Everybody has health care. Uh, we don't have that in our country. Uh, not everybody works two jobs. There's a lot of working poor that work a couple jobs and it's hard for them to work with their children because they work so hard outside just providing for their family. So closing the achievement gap is partly we could reduce the gap between rich and poor earners in, in our society. The achievement gap between black and white students actually closed, uh, got the smallest that it's ever been since we started tracking this sort of data um, in the 80s. And that was at the same time that students were being bused, sometimes involuntarily. You know, a lot of people supported that, a lot of people didn't support that busing of students around. But what I think it did is that when we share our students, we share our resources equally. And that is when our history in the 80s that the achievement gap closed the most between uh, white students and black students. But since the business, um, the business people got involved in education and politicians and textbook companies and testing and standardized testing, since they've gotten involved heavily, the business roundtable has gotten involved in the 80s and the 90s, that achievement gap has actually grown. And it's become, I think Jonathan Kozel was saying that it's, it's the, as wide as it's ever been you know, pre-civil rights era, that uh, I'm just fascinated by the idea that when we mixed all of our students around, like just threw them in hodgepodge and they were kind of equally distributed, that suddenly the scores started to even out because I think we all considered all children our own and didn't s segregate them. I think the segregation leads to inequities. In terms of closing the achievement gap, I think parents are critical. Um, but uh, having worked with educators all of my life, um, I have a tremendous respect for teachers, and uh, teachers are one of the single most important factor in a classroom in terms of affecting student learning. There's 40 elementary schools in Savannah County, Chatham County Public Schools, and we did a um, multiple regression to predict achievement on the state test. We got 100% of the variance. All of the variance was explained by the combination of percentage of kids for free lunch, percentage of kids that were African American. We could rank all 40 schools exactly by their the combination of those two things. Uh, it's amazing. So that, of course, what that means is not one school full of teachers were helping those kids overcome that deficiency. You know, there is a belief out there that teachers from this school are not doing everything they can to raise the test scores of the students in their classrooms. And that's just not the case. With few exceptions, I'm sure, unless the administration in the school is lacking, teachers who work with disadvantaged student populations are trying every measure possible to help those students achieve academically. 
and as an educator who has primarily worked in schools with high poverty and students who are English language learners, I am truly bothered by these erroneous arguments.